esteemed president vice chancellor honorable panel members and guests of honor delegates invited guests member of faculty and staff coordinators of the symposium and the student college a very good afternoon and a warm welcome to all of you to the plenary session of the national symposium on ai and decision science 2021 ladies and gentlemen today professor abhijit mandal assistant professor asbm university will moderate this session i now take the privilege of introducing the panel members of this session mr sakya singha uh, mahapatra is a robotic researcher he is the founder of sec robotics lab one of most exciting and fast growing uh, robotics education company of india he aims at building the biggest and best robotics company of the world a budding entrepreneur who not only follows his dreams but also encourages and motivates masses to pursue entrepreneurship through various meetups mr sakya singha mahapatra is one of the most dynamic character in the odisha startup space he is also known for his innovative style of promoting robotics culture in india it been said thousand of students are leading robotics research on wide range of its applications because of mr sakya singha single minded vision to create a world where human and robots can coexist mr mahapatra with giant knowledge in robotics and lighting his audience with uh, robot designing technologies and he has up skilled 50000 to 50 students to achieve hands on expertise in designing robots since 2009 i welcome you sir to this symposium dr kora Sat uh, satya babu joined national institute of technology rolkala in july 2008 as an assistant professor grade 1 in the department of computer science and engineering his phd was in uh, data privacy from nit rolkala in 2013 his areas of interest are natural language uh, processing data engineering and social computing with extensive range of research and teaching experience dr uh, babu has uh, 15 publication and dozens of paper presentation in various national and international platforms he is the active member of gmie mia eng lmcrsi and lmiste he has guided three phd student for successful completion of doctoral welcome you sir to this symposium dr anavar apu chandrasekhar rao is an assistant professor of department of cse IIT Dhanbad he has 12 years of teaching experience with special interest in bioinformatics data mining machine learning data and knowledge based system with phd from iit dhanbad and many r&d projects of mhrd dr rao has 15 widely acclaimed publication in different journals and conferences on two patents published uh, five books chapters and 10 research scholars are currently working under him I welcome you sir to this symposium. I now request the moderator professor Abhijit Mandal to deliver the opening remarks and then moderate the session. Thank you Shivani. A very good afternoon and a warm national symposium. on ai and decision science 2021 with the theme smart decision data science and artificial intelligence as you all know that smart is the acronym that stands for specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound if the decision will follow all these parameter then that decision will become smart whether it will come from the human beings or it come through the machines So smart decision is an upcoming field that contains a range of decision making strategies to design model adjust execute and track decision models and processes so the implementation which is actually offers a structure of organizational decision making and process with the incorporation of machine learning algorithm so when you are talking about the machine learning algorithm so this machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence so the principle thought is that decision depends on our impression on how action leads to a result 
So it incorporates it any aspects like financial expert, social researcher, any psychologist, educator, educators, leaders, and some more. So I think a smart decision structure assists with the operation of AI and ML, like artificial intelligence and machine learning for the real business decision, which is widely required. A lot of stories we have been heard, I think that what AI can do. So wherever it is, you know, that it's an insufficient success stories on how companies inspired on of business idea, but we cannot distinguish them on that in a different parameter, like as a each CEO as a specialist in a classification method, or they have to understand the linear programming and all those things. Yet we can make them a mindful or how data and AI can assist them with accomplishing in showing up to a ideal decision. So a smart decision ties with numerous AI frameworks together to produce a more comprehensive way to deal with the decision making. So no machine can give you the decision, only and the things or that, that, that algorithm or the techniques can reach you to take the ultimate decision. But ultimately, the decision will be taken by the human being. So as per the research, we have seen that almost 800% more information before the finish of 2022. And almost 80% of this unstructured information that comprises, you know, that pictures, emails, voice, video, or any kind of records and so on. So while the human power would not be able to process all those data, so that time the machine will come into the play. So decision intelligence, or whether we can say the smart decision, is an answer for handling this expansion by the assistance of improving machine learning algorithm. So as a human, uh, or as a human instinct in the decision making process, that will not be eliminated because ultimately the human would be there. Otherwise, who will train the machine? So machine learning algorithm will give significant insight and support. And in future, we believe that decision intelligence or the smart decision, what we actually call it, that will affect organization in other ways, like higher computational force, or you can say that the different AI frameworks that can support managers to make quick or accurate decisions by offering the most gainful choices. So for every decision, so that smart decision will take place to set with their clear objectives. And using the smart mentality, you should be able to set a clear business goals and objectives. We have to rely on the evidence and understand what your audience actually wanting and learn what we have or why we already we have uh, taken some mistakes and we have to prepare some contingency funds. So if we talk about the business owners, you know that uh, they are encounter a lot of stress throughout the day, even when they are supposed to be at home and uh, unplugged from the office. So they still hold on to a lot of what is going on as they are try to unwind all those things. So it could be a stress from trying to get a new client, or you can say that involvement in some legal conflict, or developing a new product, or handling an employee's issue. So on the top of all that, there are the decisions to be made. So this is all about the today's theme, the smart decision and artificial intelligence and the decision science. So now I request to give their valuable opinion. We have a industry to academic different personalities to give their views. So now I like to request Mr. Mahapatra to uh, say something. Sir, please over to you. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank, thank you, sir, for having me in this session. So whether I do fit into the system or I don't know, but anyway, I'll try my level best. Uh, and uh, respect panelists and uh, dignitaries and all professors and my dear students. So myself, Sakya Singh Mahapta, I'm a practicing entrepreneur and practicing engineer. So uh, once we talk about this AI and ML, then we also do talk a lot about robot. But I did, I do say if uh, robots are there exist today and without uh, and ai ml is, could be you know the oxygen of the robots without artificial intelligence and machine learning we cannot uh, dream about a smart interactive robot so today we do talk about human 
and machine interface and once we talk about human and machine interface we need to talk about you know the interaction between the human and machine so just i wanted to bring out a small example from a prospect from a product development once we are develop हेलो सर महापत्र सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल एक्चुअली या हेलो यस यस इट्स ओके सर I'm lost for a minute. <laughs> okay, so once we are talking about a particular product development, let me talk talk to you in a with a live product development one. What we are working, we are currently working with a, a robotic toy development, and the objective of this particular robot that it will be catered to the childrens of a age group of let's say three onwards. So right now, what can you expect a, a kid with a age group of three? want to do with the robots so typically we do talk about putting some camera analyzing the taking the capturing the photo of the kid with a facial recognition so if you talk about a facial recognition facial recognition is a one of the vast research area so there are two things one thing you can recognize the face you can interact with the kid as per the facial expressions the second thing one more thing here again, again you want to do can we build our own facial expression and the robot also can demonstrate few facial expressions so these all things are you know very different so if you talk about facial expression then we need to create lot of data set we have to take capture few videos you know, do sentiment sentiment mode analysis of the people and we need to create data set of the different types of facial expressions and we need to create some intent and response model where depending on the facial expression will be taken as a intent and the response will be defined in the system where we have to respond so for example a kid is smiling so the system should understand the kid is happy kid is playing with the robot so this is something we call it as a emotional intelligence can and the kid is asking some questions then we talk about from the image we or from the video we go to the Uh, you know voice so i am saying i i i am happy i am saying hey i am happy i am saying hey i am happy so different different types of you know audio expression or voice expression are going on so how to record these voice expression can you transfer into a voice to text model and how do you actually understand what is the expression and behind the expression what is there so there we need to come in action and work so typically somebody comes to a robot and uh, wanted to interact with the robot so there is a huge gap between the you know outputs so typically if you look about a output or a system development then we can go to directly to google dialog flow if you go to google dialog flow you have to create your intent and you have to create response and the system is ready and the once the system is ready you put your uh, intent then the response comes out of it and the response are predefined so right now if you look at a toy and which will be which machine should be you know interactive so it's a human and machine interaction this is some of the use case where we need lot of ai ml and the capacity we have to build with you know not with the hardware the hardware will be stagnant and the capacity we have to build on artificial intelligence machine learning and you can say deep learning and where we have to work a lot on video we have to work a lot in terms of you know voice and text to voice and voice to text so this is one of the example then i am talking about the second example i am talking about a reception let's talk about a corporate reception and i am trying to get into your office the moment i come down to your office the robot welcomes me hello welcome but i want the robot should 
welcome me by my name so here again we need lot of you know image work so where the robot will capture my image and it will process it will find my name from the data database or data set and it will say hello mr mahapatra welcome to asbm university the moment the robot welcomes me so right now i want to create entire system where my appointment is fixed with uh, let's say professor abhijit mandal so it will check with the uh, uh, workflow of abhijit mandal ji and it will say yes my appointment is matching there then it will just pass on a message to mr abhijit mandal and he will say yes i want to meet now or i want to meet after 10 minutes or 20 minutes this could be a use case so here the system the robot and the reception can verify me by putting me a, you know by capturing my mobile number by sending a message and i'll send an otp so this could be a use case we can talk about an enterprise reception management system by developing a robot which has a capability to interact to capture our images to recognize our facial expressions and you know even also it will have the ability to store the gadgets and what are the laptops what are the mobile we are carrying into the university will capture all data so this will be you know not about you know touchless but it will be you know data based oriented so what anybody getting to the office of aspm university 100% data is recorded at this end and this data will be a learning to the system and later on this will be utilized on our need based applications modeling so once we talk about uh, typically ai and ml then we talk about uh, today largely on video largely in voice and once we talk about business analytics and decision making so let's talk about a business profit loss assessment whatever the excel sheet data today we have and we are putting all the excel sheet to and we are building our own model and we know we have a standard thumb rule in terms of you know taking a decision right now these data models can be a learning to the system and the system can learn out of these data bases and the systems can start giving a decision i'm just giving a small example let's talk about a pan dukan or chai wala where we go regularly and today i don't have money with me with me or i am not carrying my wallet still the chai wala gives me a cup of coffee and uh, ask me you know, next time you can pay but doesn't happen with a new stranger going to the shop so there is something you know the soft computing also comes in the picture somehow so what i say here the transactional rating so the my each and every transaction with the chai wala has been recorded well and each transaction has been recorded and accordingly the trustworthy to the customer comes there and depending on the trustworthiness the chai wala can give a credit or not so these kind of systems if you are going to develop and we have to integrate this kind of ai ml and decision making to our system then we really can replace a human with a ai system the bigger challenge is that once we are putting a machine any any software or anywhere people do understand that this is a machine but people do expect better service than a human so to offer better service than a human we need to do a better decision making and all this decision making meticulously can be done with uh, our ai ml models so in our company we have just built a small ai and ml team and uh, they set up experts who are actually developing the solutions for such applications so this will be from my side professor in terms of industry integration so i will be love to take you know the you know any kind of discussion to follow up to this things i'm just giving some of the examples what we are working currently at our own workplace hello yeah thank you sir so anybody having any question if they have they can write on the chat box okay yes and yes yes we can discuss the same so it's oh, uh, so it's over from you yeah yeah we will continue let's let you continue now okay. so let's uh, listen to the professor then we'll continue
ओके ओके सो नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल डॉक्टर सत्य बाबू फॉर इज वैल्यूएबल ओपिनियन अबाउट द टॉपिक ऑन द थीम सर प्लीज ओवर टू यू yes sir i think my screen is visible right yes sir okay fine i hope the screen now is visible i have opened a a pdf file is opened uh, is it visible sir my screen ah uh, your screen is visible you can start yes. sir yeah yeah sir so uh, good afternoon uh, mr mohanpatra then uh, dr abhijit yeah, dr chandrashekar and uh, all the dignitaries of this uh, symposium and uh, my dear students so i have just shared a slide here just one slide you can please just check it how much data is generated in one minute in every in 2020 this was like uh, i have brought this uh, slide or the uh, data from domo sapiens site you can please just check it once like uh, the data that is generated in a single minute in 2020 every minute of the day if you see here you can just see on the right side if you see here okay uh, youtube users upload 500 hours of video oh my god how many hours that we can see or how many videos we will be able to see it how much data is being generated from there you see instagram users post something 3000 uh, something like uh, 347000 uh, stories uh, in instagram doordarsh diners order something around uh, 2 to 5 meals in a single minute netflix users stream something around 404 a uh, thousand plus hours of video you you just see uh, how the demographics of the data that is just generated in a single minute first i wanted to show you this particular slide just to make you aware that how much data is generated basically if it is generated in a single minute okay how much data is being generated in a single hour in a single day or you just consider it in a single year in a single month like that how, or till date how much data is available on the internet this is astonishing really so huge data is being generated right you can see see all the uh, different different companies how how the data is being generated it is just uh, projected here this this we call this one as a data never sleeps data never sleeps 8.0 Okay, 8.0 or 8.0, you can call this one. Okay, uh, similarly in 2019 that is 7.0, uh, 2018 it is uh, 6.0. So like that data is there. If you see, even uh, just I did not project to all those data, but if you see some companies how fastly they overtake other companies in the in the process of generation of the data. Uh, basically. i i'm just uh, interested in just uh, give, giving you a brief uh, like uh, how this generates uh, data is generated or why did uh, this uh, data got generated the main reasons if you see it okay the main reason is like sorry just yeah due to technology adoption first and foremost point second one is growth in data with respect to volume velocity and variety of data and convergence of different different technologies these three things are the main entities or you can say the parameters behind the growth of the data huge data now i just i'm uh, since this symposium is mostly on decision making and uh, how the data is used in decision making i directly wanted to enter into some applications like what are the uses use cases of this different data analytics uh some of the applications just i have brought it all these are browsed and brought it from internet only or from different articles only so please uh, just go through here 
like uh, maybe like if you have already gone through then uh, i'm sorry that i could not uh, uh, catch up that one but still i have some content more uh, enough you know, content is there for this uh, session uh, i have already brought it so if if not interested we can move on to the next topic also no issue on that one but just uh, some use cases just i wanted to uh, show you like understanding and targeting customers how this data is uh, data can be used for understanding and targeting the customers understanding and optimizing business processes uh, personal uh, quantification and performance optimization uh, like improving healthcare and public health improving sports performance improving science and research optimizing machine and device performance improving security and law enforcement uh, enforcement uh, improving and optimizing cities and countries like this and financial trading so all these are some of the use cases that are just picked up there are huge almost ai data science has entered into everybody's livelihood you cannot say that i don't i i can escape from data right no one can say uh, that uh, because i can prove that you cannot escape uh, if you see first use case if you see here understanding and targeting customers we'll see all these use cases so throughout this session this use cases only i will be discussing if if uh, if uh, uh, professor avijit i uh, is it okay or anybody has already discussed the use cases so that i can move further also no issue no issues uh, no sir you can discuss sir. okay problem. okay fine okay uh, because morning session i could not attend due to some other uh, work at home so uh, first use case is understanding and targeting customers so big data here i mean to say nowadays all data is big only okay there is nothing called small data available right now so data is used to better understand customers and their behaviors and pref uh, preferences you know that like uh, uh, the companies basically target you very nicely target the customers very nicely so you see that the target here for example you take for this use case is very accurately predict when one of their customers will expect a baby so that they can give some offers or maybe like they can uh, make so depending upon the season or maybe depending upon the situation that has to occur what type of offers can be given or what type of uh, uh, sales can be projected walmart can predict what products will sell basically car insurance companies understand how well their customers actually drive so based on that one what type of insurance they can suggest similarly you understand like obama or maybe like uh, even uh, our honorable prime minister narendra modi ji also he has won using this big data analytics okay this is how just i wanted to project like data is used basically the data is used here earlier if you see that like uh, whenever nowadays what whenever you browse whenever you do any activity okay you leave a trail of the data there is the forensics okay you keep everything you 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 keep a footprint of your forensic data and then you leave the trail there so automatically all this data can be captured it can be combined together integrated it becomes a goal now retailers are able to optimize their stock based on predictions generated from a social media data web search trends and weather forecasts so based on the situation maybe like what type of stock should be kept what type of stock or how, what is the rate of selling of a particular stock stock in the sense here i mean to say that like the uh, commodities okay different commodities uh, that the businessmen sell okay so here like what what uh, how how they get it sold and like what is the amount of stock they need, uh, they need to bring and keep it so that for a better performance maybe like you see nowadays based on the situation uh, like uh, masks now uh, nowadays corona so everybody use masks so bring mask and keep that one so that huge uh, so what is the rate of selling of the mask or this product uh, like maybe like sanitizers you see uh, once uh, uh, just last year when i went to a medical store few medical stores in the front they used to keep only sanitizers bottle nothing else so it is all everything about the, so how how do they decide this one so they know that from the data that is being evolved from the announcements that is see how announcements are being done from the projections of the data right so based on all this so they know like what things they need to keep in stock and then how they need to sell that one 
So geographic positioning and radio frequency identification sensors are used to track goods and delivery vehicles and optimize the routes by integrating live traffic data also. So this one, you, you order a, uh, like a, uh, Uber Eats or maybe like Swiggy or something, Ola Eats or something, you order it. What happens? Automatically, um, you can lively track that person also. Okay, up to where the uh, the food is uh, food has already arrived. So, understand for understanding and optimizing the business processes. Also, you use data. Now, personal quantification and performance optimization. You just see that the job on armband collects data on your calorie consumption, activity levels, and your sleep patterns and. Um, Analyze such huge volumes of data to bring entirely new insights that it can feed back to individual users. Maybe like another in another 10 minutes, there is a possibility that you may get a so it may automatically. So these are smart, right? These are smart things that are happening with the data. How data is used for this personal quantification and performance optimization. It says that like Facebook can predict maybe like when are you going to die? It's funny thing, we feel funny, but uh, if really you are attached with the internet, see nowadays you cannot escape from the internet or you cannot escape from capturing data. Big brother is always watching you. Okay, always data is being collected about you. Whatever you do it in your mobile, whatever you do it in your internet browser or whatever you do it anywhere. If you log in, if you are connected with the system, it means that your data trial is being recorded. Most online dating sites apply big data tools and algorithms to find the appropriate matches. See, sometimes even uh, why go about dating sites? You just go with the commercial websites of Amazon or maybe like people, they are recommending you. You purchased one type of commodity, maybe like a pen you purchased. They recommend you what type of pen, further pens are available, what discount is there on the other pen with the similar brands, right? All this is happening with the data because data is available. They can do it. So they know that like how personal quantification and performance optimization can be also done with the data. Improving healthcare and public health. So this, if you're having big data, you can apply some big data techniques that are already being used to monitor babies in a specialist premature and sick baby unit, maybe. And maybe based on you, you know that nowadays uh, when data see like one person, one of my friend on use case, just I'm telling you, one of my friend was uh, complaining about a cardiac problem. So he was given a quote, like he, the doctors diagnosed everything they have done and they need to study him further. Means continuously monitoring and studying about that uh, person need to be done. So he was given a quote basically, that quote comprises of some sensors, uh, which is uh, uh, touching some parts of the body maybe like the heart part and back part and all and maybe like from the arm so he was wearing that coat and he was going for shopping he was doing everything and the doctor sitting in his chamber he was able to monitor that one come uh, continuously so this is this is how it is happening so when data is there these analytic techniques maybe like it is showing like and it is also projecting like which place he is so that in case of any emergency the doctor can pick that person so these data analytic techniques allows us to monitor and predict the development of epidemics and disease outbreaks. Even this also, you know that, that uh, like there was a uh, swine flu. Okay, swine flu. You you see that uh, like uh, predicting this swine flu basically, uh, and you, you, they applied techniques like. Uh, some uh, the Google used some 126 parameters basically to help the US government to see that like where which are the parts of the cities where swine flu is there. How Google did, did it? My, I means like what they have done is that like see the thing is that there was a medicine for the initial stages of swine flu. There was a medicine. Okay, the, the rate of production of the medicine was not so high. Vaccine means medicine was there. So in that case, what they used to do? Uh, uh, but the government was con totally confused. The U.S. government was totally confused, like where the medicine should be sent, in which part of the city, United States, it has to be sent. 
which state it has to be sent so during that time they took the help of google and google what it, uh, they have done is that they have taken some 126 parameters so from a particular city if all this 126 parameters see generally nowadays what we do whenever we are having some cold or fever or anything we just go to google and we first search google is our uh, biggest advisor for us Uh, symptoms of covid symptoms of uh, like uh, uh, symptoms for this 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 what are the types of diseases just to simply we write it and we just check it right and uh, even if the doctor gives you medicine what what we do simply ask the google only uh, su- 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 suppose he has given sinarest sinarest suitable for children just simply guy, uh, google it and you check it right dosage use and uh, 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 advantages and disadvantages of sinarest for example so we just study like uh, from the different medic- medical practitioners everything and all so we are so people also they go and they check for all these details so in, from a particular con- uh, state or uh, in a city if the, all these 126 parameters are searched then definitely is all these 126 parameters are associated with swine flu so uh, definitely then they used to suggest to the government that okay in this particular city there is a possibility of swine flu so definitely government used to send that particular medicine swine flu medicine to that particular city so before the patient reaches the uh, clinic the medicine was available there but what is the situation in india we are not using data analytics properly that's why things are going in a wrong direction so by recording and analyzing every heartbeat and breathing patterns of every baby infections can also be predicted maybe like 24 hours or maybe like 48 hours before or at least 12 hours before like that it can be predicted right all this can happen using data you know that like uh, nowadays you use video analytics to track the performance of every player so you know that sevag you have to give a bounce and if the ball comes in swing to the hip sevag cannot play so that is the uh, simple trick so using video analytics so what type of ball has to be bowled to a particular uh, batsman and who is the bowler who is specialist in bowling such type of balls is to be chosen right this is all like you use video analytics for the uh, performance activities or uh, uh, studying the opponent player also so you use some sensors in sports equipment to allow us to get feedback on the games also like uh, even you know that uh, uh, like uh, whether uh, what whether it is a out or not out under the third umpire how he decides you can just see in cricket or any other particular games okay related games which use the sensors to predict uh, uh, the decision making okay or give the decision making so you use some smart technology to track athletes outside of the sporting environment about the nutrition sleep and social media conversation all these things you see it before sending the player for the game and in improving science and research maybe like you can see uh, maybe if you must have heard about large scale synaptic telescope lsst which is which was supposed to be installed in uh, uk by 2021 uh, to study the stars and maybe like the uh, sky okay the all stars and the universal facts and all uh, that telescope okay it can generate and produce or it can download maybe like some terabytes of data okay maybe like some 10 to 15 terabytes of data in 30 minutes you know that huge data after getting all this data how much data is being generated you can just see that uh, see all these instruments can be used right you similarly you see here cern the uh, swiss uh, nuclear physics laboratory with its large hadron collider the world's largest and the most powerful particle accelerator is using thousands of computers which are distributed across 150 data centers worldwide to unlock the secrets of our universe by analyzing its 30 petabytes of data that is being generated so huge you know about the black box in aeroplane right black box see when some air, uh, air crash is there or something happens what happens immediately we uh, people start searching for where is the black box so some crash has occurred so people take once you get the uh, black box it means that most of the thing the secret of the crash can be easily uh, means like it can be cracked out 
see what happens is that uh, the app, uh, the plane has got some thousands of sensors that are associated with that one including the video and audio everything that it can be recorded it records it it keeps it in the black box maybe like for one hour of journey okay 30 30 minutes of journey or one hour of journey it keeps some terabytes of data in that black box so analyzing that tera, uh, black box data in the black box you can exactly find out what has happened and how the crash has occurred what is the root cause for the crash everything can be found out optimizing machines and device performances also yes google self driving car you you call it a tesla or maybe like the Toyota uh, Prius is fitted with cameras, GPS, powerful computers and sensors to safely drive without the intervention of human beings. Nowadays it is possible, even Tata is telling that yes, we are going to launch maybe like probably in uh, shortly the uh, uh, self-driving cars within the range of or electric cars basically and also self-driving cars uh, with some ranges of like uh, some 50 to 60 lakhs. So big data tools are also used to optimize energy grids using data from smart meters so automatically uh, it, it should be able to even uh, uh, sufficient sensors are possible maybe like uh, associated with that uh, smart meters automatically when you are not at home this meter gets closed it happens right smart lights and all everything is there so for improving the security and law enforcement also you can use this data analytics techniques or data is there in decision making. So National Security Agency in US use big data analytics to find terrorist plots uh, and maybe like uh, the police force uses big data tools to catch criminals and even predict uh, criminal activity and credit card companies uh, use big data to detect fraudulent transactions all this one. You know that how, um, uh, who is that terrorist, can you please help me out, uh, Afghanistan. I forgot the name of that terrorist who was uh, killed by Osama bin Osama bin Laden. Okay, how Osama bin Laden was attacked? So they used big data techniques. You see the house that Osama bin uh, stay, that house construction was something different, peculiar. It was an outlier than the conventional houses that are built across, uh, around uh, Abu Dhabi. So there was that was that house was an outlier that made them people think that okay something fizzy is there in that particular house and nobody used to go there nobody used to come from there only limited people used to go there and come there to come from there no telephone line was there no internet line was there every garbage everything was burnt outside the house within the camp compound of that house such a big house without all these facilities so all of this data are used for analyzing okay see how nsl uh, the national security agencies of us has uh, targeted and that was a case study that was an example best example of how uh, it is done okay uh, like improving and optimizing cities and countries as yes, smart cities optimize traffic flows based on real time you know that like uh, nowadays whenever you are using uh, you set your uh, gps for like when you are driving a car you set your target so it will give you a route map to you and it will suggest you whether you want to go to the area, which area if you go or which, which is the route that you have to choose for reaching to the destination in the lowest time. You know all this. So it takes live traffic data, the weather conditions, many things, many parameters it takes into condi uh, condi uh, consideration. So financial trading also, nowadays you know that high frequency trading, you use algorithmic trading, you call that one also algorithmic trading, right? So generally you use algorithms, maybe like what is the process, if this pattern is there. See everything, your stock market, some people give you coaching and all, they tell that like when you want to sell, when you want to buy. Huh? They give, they, they come and tell you that this is a candlestick trading, that is, this is a, a swing trading, this is like a derivative trading or some types of many things they give you coaching and all. But how, how that happens, everything depends on a pattern, pattern of the data. So studying the data algorithmically, if the model is built then maybe like when this situation occurs then you have to sell your stocks when this situation occurs when a particular situation occurs you have to buy more stocks so automatically maybe like this algorithmic trading does without human intervention okay so maybe like uh, these are the case studies uh, so 
should we stop here and go for some questions? Abhijit sir? Yes sir. Yeah, so then we can... Hello? Yes? You are not audible actually. Yeah, you can unmute and speak, please. If somebody wanted to speak, you can unmute and speak, please. Okay, so now I would like to call Dr. Rao. Uh, uh, hello, good evening, everyone. Yes. Yeah, yeah, am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks for much patience uh, from the morning. Those who are attending this uh, national symposium, and especially I thank uh, Professor uh, Aujit Mandal and. For us, Babu, for making me into this session, and also I thank ASPM University before starting my session. I'll just share my uh, uh, PPT. Or the present. Yeah, let me share my. Yes. Uh, Uh, are you able to see my uh, screen? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. It's okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. I just want to tell about data science and its applications, basically related to uh, the, uh, data science can be applied to many fields. I focused on only few fields, uh, such as healthcare, majorly on healthcare, by uh, bioinformatics and even e-commerce, energy industry, and travel industry, and even including finance. So uh, let us go. What I'm going to cover in this topic is uh, uh, just introduction about data science and basics of evolutionary algorithms and application of evolutionary algorithms, data science applications, and uh, in medical imaging and healthcare industry, how the data science is used. So let me go in uh, the step by step. Uh, let's start with the data science. Uh, as we know, from the morning onwards, everyone is talking about data science, and it's you know, uh, majorly deals in the areas of computer science, math, and statistics. Even uh, uh, domain experts, whichever the field it is. Or the business knowledge is essential for uh, for taking certain decisions on data science, and it includes machine learning, deep learning. Many things are involved in the data science. Let's go a bit of uh, yeah introduction to it. Uh, usually, it's a, a data science is an umbrella which provides a various resources for solving any kind of problem, and. Uh, Many leading organizations, they purely depend on the data for various purposes because data is such important for every organization. Even if you see um, an internet, if you, are, if you want to buy something, and there are a lot many suggestions, even if you see Amazon, Flipkart, or any uh, uh, e-commerce sites, when you're purchasing something, after once you purchase something, they will give a lot of suggestions like, uh, uh, based on uh, the recommender systems, they will give some inputs. Like, uh, so uh, some of the people, those who have taken this product, they also have taken this product also with them. So such kind of uh, suggestions, like uh, su suggestible items, which the users sometimes may be impressed and they may go for it also. It means it's a business uh, uh, tricks so that uh, the business can be improved. Uh, here, as I said, uh, data science can be used in 
uh, e-commerce, finance, healthcare, transport, gaming, and many more. And we, we see one by one a bit. No. Every data scientist must be a master, or at least you should know aware of the statistics, probability, and a bit of programming, or ML tools. Or these things are, uh, means nowadays it's essential. Or at least they should be aware of what's happening in that level. If you see the data science life cycle, it starts with the data discovery, usually searching for different sources of data and capturing structured and unstructured data. And then uh, they prepare the data by uh, converting data into common format. And once the data is ready, and then they go for mathematical models, they make certain models uh, by making certain relationship among the data. And then, so they try to uh, gather, uh, uh, I mean, uh, after knowing the, uh, the proper data, and they also study by applying different tools for uh, uh, or such as for uh, knowing uh, certain decisions, let it be classification, whether it comes into that particular situation or not, or by, by using different tools of uh, data science, using machine learning tools like uh, classification. And uh, they uh, finally, they communicate those findings to the stakeholders or the decision makers for uh, the cross-checking and even how good it is just to verify once that is verified by the stakeholders then if it, the model is working fine they uh, make the uh, the tool ready for their industry so this is the way how the um, uh, usual process of data science takes place and if you see the uh, further explanation about uh, data science uh, this this also uh, uh, holds the uh, awesome workflow. Awesome uh, stands for obtain, scrub, explore, model, and interpret. So here, what they do is gathering the data, clean the data, finding significant patterns, construct the models to predict and forecast, and then put the results into the good use. This is a, one of the, the important aspects. This is the workflow, usual workflow for every data scientist should know about this workflow. And they should practice these kind of aspects in their uh, daily life for the data scientist. And there are many uh, tools uh, in the data uh, for data science. Some of the tools uh, usually you, even you get if you search in the internet. These are some of the top uh, data science tools that we, we, we use. And if you compare data science versus uh, artificial intelligence, it's actually data science also uses uh, um, yeah AI and machine learning partially into their uh, decision making, and so even if you see purely AI, AI is uh, in the, uh, main field and their subfields are machine learning and the deep learning is a subfield of machine learning as well as AI. So here, it's the the whatever the, the tools and techniques that comes under different parts of deep learning or machine learning, they're all uh, uh, either directly or indirectly related to the AI-based AI models. So a, a branch of artificial intelligence gives the computers the ability to learn without using explicitly program, without writing much program. And uh, just like uh, by training some data, and uh, so after making uh, certain decisions with the model that which is already developed existing models for data analysis so they do training validation it's a part of uh, uh, training itself training and validation once the part is done uh, once they are uh, properly trying the the data with some models then they go for testing usually it's uh, training and testing but validation is also part of the training over here. And DL is a subset of machine learning that has uh, 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 networks capable of learning unsupervised from data that is unstructured or unlabeled. Means, uh, for example, if you see the unlabeled data here, if you see the uh, uh, unlabeled data here, I have the labeled data like dog, cat, or something. But if you train the data in such a way that if there is no 
uh, um, labeled information also. With the DL models, whatever the way they're trying uh, during the process of learning, so they will be able to easily uh, properly track that's whether it's a dog or cat at the end. So here there are many layers over here. Hidden layers are the input layer, hidden layers and the output layer. In the they they go different uh, process in the hidden layers and ultimately they at the output layer they should uh, uh, give the the proper output for certain decision. Like uh, depend on the in input images. And machine learning and data science, if you see together, uh, the, their um, usual process is optimize the performance criteria using example data or past experience is the major aspects in the uh, in the in their combination. Uh, the role of statistics is inference from the sample. We have to take certain inferences from the given samples, and we have to uh, use certain uh, uh, certain inputs to the model as well. Role of computer science. Usually, uh, we used to make certain algorithms. That algorithm should be efficient enough. Means they should give a uh, good accuracy in sol solving the problem. Let it be for pattern matching or whatever it may be. We are going to do uh, for uh, whatever the algorithm that we use. That should be efficient. That's a part of the computer science uh, scientist people. Uh, or solve the optimization problem just like. Um, uh, minimization or maximization if you have a certain range of values which is uh, to find out the, the best value optimum values we have to use certain subcomputing techniques maybe GA or MOGA depends on the different problems if it's a simple a simple object to optimization problem we simple G is enough whereas uh, there are conflicting objects then we go for multi object genetic algorithm kind of thing likewise there are uh, various aspects depend on our requirement and if you see the machine learning techniques there are unsupervised unsupervised semi supervised reinforcement learning and there are the examples for this and uh, so deep learning models and frameworks these are different uh, models as well and uh, yeah and if you see the applications for the data science there uh, especially in association supervised learning unsupervised learning or reinforcement if you see one by one in the yeah learning in the association aspects it's they are trying to learn the association means to know the uh, the relation among the two entities just like uh, for example if you're going for a supermarket if you're purchasing a milk uh, with milk, what usually the people use to purchase milk with bread or whatever it may be the combination. So usually with the data, historical past data, they uh, they have to make certain association rules, and then with the help of the association rule, with the help of the support and confidence, they will try to predict uh, uh, the relation among the different entities. So they use different association rule mining approaches like a priori fp growth there are many approaches in the uh, association rule mining and if you see the uh, classification point of view just uh, for example credit scoring if you are going for bank loans they have certain tools with them already what they use to is they have already trained the data in their uh, in their data they have already trained in such a way that who is a high risk person or who is a low risk person? Usually, low risk persons are uh, usually given a credit, uh, means loans to the people easily. And for the high risk people, so they uh, they try to, uh, I mean, uh, they won't take a risk for them. So for that, there are certain rules. Just like, uh, for example, this is one of the rules: if income is uh, greater than certain certain value like theta one over here theta one is just like uh, above one lakh or something like that and savings are above something like uh, 50,000 or something and then low risk otherwise high risk means actually they have to calculate everything not only this there are other uh, models as well uh, this is one kind of rule in other aspects uh, they will also consider whether the person is married or not whether uh, uh, yes 
whether he is divorced or a single person or uh, having any uh, dependencies or any already existing loans there are a lot of parameters to study and based on those parameters uh, means they make the rule and uh, based on that particular uh, rule they will judge whether the person is at the low risk or high risk means they make certain rule they just like if fells kind of rules that really gives the results for the classification for just for making a decision uh, if you see the classification models there are kn uh, basin uh, logistic regression basin network class where navy base uh, yeah um, there are mlp sgd there are, these are all different class uh, classifiers or uh, classification techniques mostly there are uh, um, function based tree based and uh, likewise right so here if you see the uh, classification in terms of pattern recognition just uh, uh, pattern recognition certain pattern they are trying to identify just in terms of face recognition if pattern recognition is taken as an application uh, in the example of face recognition like uh, the uh, pose the lighting occlusion and makeup face health means there are certain features they try to observe uh and based on the values that they have they try to identify the different faces and similarly character uh, recognition different handwriting styles and uh, those styles will be predicted and they will match to a certain characters like that and even including speech recognition just uh, temporal dependency uh, the way they speak they have different uh, uh different samples and they match to the the one speech recognition and even in the medical diagnosis also from symptoms to illness just having different symptoms and they try to uh, link to the with these symptoms probably he is having so on so diseases there are certain pattern recognition application uh, uh, in the uh, in the medical diagnosis as well in biometrics as well like uh, the thumb impression or even uh so there are certain aspects like face iris signature there are many aspects over there for recognizing the proper uh, uh, uh identity of the particular person or uh, in outliers means when we are going for different classes if certain data is not comes under any of the classes that they have defined means label uh classes already labeled classes they go to the outlier that means and they are not coming based on the definition of uh, 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 the group or the classification they are not coming to any uh, group so they are outliers they have to be built properly so that uh, maybe this might be a noise value maybe this these things that has to be handled these can be anomalies or this can be misclassified or something has to be properly uh, analyze for this we need to go for outlier or uh, novel detection so there are uh, many many aspects in that outlier detection as well in agriculture we use the quality of uh, crop detection in civil engineering we use classification of various zones of land site susceptibility means if you have certain area in the in the particular place whether it be darjeeling or uh, some areas where usual land site occurs so in that is uh, we used to uh, with the help of the classification techniques we try to predict uh, the areas where there is a uh, high chance of uh, uh, landslide uh, landslide cases that happens every time during the rainy season or during so on so seasons depend on the different properties and uh, uh, this classification also uh, they they try to Uh, even uh, we uh, i am also uh, one of the other for uh, those classification methods for land slice susceptibility uh, which we have applied as interdisciplinary research and uh, here to the face recognition so just as i said this is a training samples the, the top images are the same person during training we have given four four uh, samples and we name this person different images to one particular label and then in the testing sample whenever the test images input images are given whenever this first image has been identified this is matching to any of 
this particular part. Then we match to the number identified as the so and so person. Likewise, depend on the images, based on the training, we'll be able to identify which person it is. And uh, for uh, 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 assessing quality of uh, agriculture food products, so just like if you see the leaves and the leaf disease on the leaf, just if you see the leaves, we can easily identify it is having some disease. So uh, certain image processing techniques we are going to apply over there by taking the snaps of those images of the, the this particular crops. So we try to understand how healthy these leaves are. And if uh, any such symptoms are there, like uh, uh, certain diseases are there, then uh, so what are the usual conditions they have? So they have already preserved those information as well. After that, they try to conclude uh, by seeing the uh, this status of the images, they will try to predict what kind of diseases also they have or how good they are, whether they are good or not. And similarly, uh, predicting future like forecasting data and uh, even recommender systems like data with the help of uh, content-based filtering or collaborative filtering uh, and uh, supervised learning. There are many use, uses using supervised learning like uh, prediction of future cases, knowledge extraction, compression, outlier detection, non-supervised learning, just normally how we usually learn a similar way because we don't have a labeled information and uh, we try to uh, uh, try to train the data in such a way that the similar instances are grouped into one just like applying the clustering techniques in clustering technique if you if you know the uh, k means clustering or any any clustering techniques if you see so how the clustering happens how the groupings takes place based on certain similarity measures. So uh, that's, that, uh, that will be helpful for unsupervised learning. In the reinforcement learning, uh, so in the learning process, sometimes uh, we get some errors as well. Means uh, we may not, we may not get the, uh, if certain rule is framed, that rule, with that rule we are trying to make certain decision but the rule is good for some rule is not good for some so after identifying the the rule behavior and the how good it is performing we also give the rewards to the rules so that the rule can be considered for uh, in future or the the new rules that maybe the modification of this particular rule will be used as a replacement to this so it means that certain kind of study means with the help of the uh, rewards in terms of uh, uh, rewards we we try to make a model that's a reinforcement learning means we the the one which performs good they will get the rewards or uh, the one which doesn't perform they will get the punishment punishment in terms of negative score so that the ultimately the rules having the good score they will be considered at the end likewise even the reinforcement learning they sometimes they use the combination of evolutionary algorithms just for to make the new rules. And if you see the application uh, areas of data science, uh, as I said, e-commerce, healthcare, yeah, uh, energy, travel, finance, likewise. If you see the evolutionary algorithm, how the evolutionary uh, started. If you see many people, means scientists usually uh, believe. So it's evolution starting, let it be chimpanzee or monkey and the process usually starts and the, the modern man is like this, it's a evolution. And similar similar concept we use in the evolution algorithm to make uh, the best solution. Earlier the solution might be uh, not that much good, only gradually when uh, the learning takes place or the modification takes place, this becomes good. So that was the, the similar uh, concept that uh, we usually use in the evolutionary approaches. Um, the usual characteristics of evolutionary algorithm are flexible, robust, adaptive, and autonomous, decentralized. That's why uh, EAs are, EA are nature inspired uh, techniques are usually used in the approaches. So if you see the applications of evolution in bioinformatics, just like uh, 
in uh, uh, pattern recognition like uh, protein uh, sequence prediction or uh, sequence to structure analysis they try to use uh, different evolution approaches like the moga or depend on different uh, different combinations like even for converting from uh, primary sequence to the secondary sequence and tertiary sequence are making uh, certain phylogenetic analysis they use different kinds of evolution approaches uh, in evolution approaches they try to make uh, certain initial initial uh, initialization uh, the, in the initialization means the, the certain parameters to be initialized and then the population size to be fixed in the population uh, the usual from the possible solution depend on the size of the, the population that we are fixing or it means some as a group it means phi as a set just a, example phi i am taking as a population set. that means i want to make this five as a set as a family and this has to be repeated for generation after generation and this five is final and at the end when we stop the uh, this evolutionary process uh, during the stopping condition whatever the five new population members are there they will be considered the final solution out of that the best one will be taken here uh, in the population means uh, to take any decision out of all possible solution depend on the population size we try to make the new children as well how we make the new children is from the given inputs only what are the initial population that we have taken from that we are selecting few as a parents and few are not as a parent because see the the one which perform, which may give the bad results that we won't consider. The one which gives the good results that will be considered for the uh, as a parents, and they will uh, go for the recombination, and uh, uh, they go for uh, uh, means they make the new children, and a little bit mutation also, uh, addition or deletion takes place to the in the intermediate solutions with the help of the mutation to make the final offspring. Means some criteria they straight away go for recombination and make the house mix some methods they go for recombination and then after that they go for mutation together after crossover they go for mutation and then the offspring will be generated the final offspring will be considered as the offspring for the particular iteration so uh, the survival selection will be just like me the generated from the different offspring that are generated they will try to make uh, uh, who will be act as the next generation uh, population members means out of for example uh, uh, some are uh, uh, generation models some are fitness based models if there is a generation model what are the new offspring that you got just simply replace the previous population that's the generation based models and whereas the fitness proportionate models what they do is for example five initial population are there now i got five offsprings then five plus five it's a ten after ten again i will rank based on fitness and then the top five will be considered the next generation population members likewise this process has to be repeated until the termination condition satisfies means fails means if the termination condition reaches um, sometimes it's a number of generations sometimes continuously the solution the the five population numbers they are not changed for uh, five iterations then we may stop there are certain criteria for stopping so those criteria will be considered as a termination conditions and there are many advantages of using evolution approaches and usually these are the components of evolution of, uh, algorithms like uh, representation evolution population selection variation operator initialization and termination uh, ga is uh, global stochastic optimization technique based on natural genetics they are robust and uh, non-problem specific they can be applied to any best fitted solution will be uh, evolved towards the objective function this for example if uh, you want to make certain graph i mean the certain image uh, having the wheels just maybe the vehicle design uh, for example this is the input uh, images five as input images and now uh, based on the parent selection criteria they select the two 
So those two will make the new. That means partially from first parent, partially from the second parent. That the children will be able to make the new children. Likewise, this is another parent selection, another group. From that, this is uh, another uh, offspring. And with the help of the mutation, whatever the the data that is there means mutation will be applied on one one parent, and crossover will be happened on the two parents. And there are some special criteria that is a multi parent. Uh, Uh, crossover techniques also multiple parents more than two also can be considered there uh, partial data from the first parent partial data from the second parent partial data from the third parent or fourth parent depends on how many parents that you are considering means that's a special case that 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 is not a natural uh, process that's uh, uh, so for that also some some uh, uh, problems they have proved that this this multi parent criteria also working fine So this is the way how they make the children. Once uh, the five children are uh, available, from the five they will be able to. Uh, if it's a fitness proportionate uh, selection for sir, means for the survival selection, then five initial population and five the offspring that we have generated. Out of this total ten, we will select the top five to become the next generation input. Are the population members means these population set of population numbers have to be evolved because the space is limited. The space is five only, and within that space, the members, the good members, will uh, stay in that particular uh, the population size in that particular size as a member. Likewise, this is the next in the next generation we got this results and the next generation we got this result. Likewise, how many generations? Are the uh, the depend on the termination condition? These iterative process has to be repeated in the evolutionary process. There are many applications in the evolutionary approaches. Yeah, uh, like in the e-commerce, as I said, uh, usually it starts giving us usual suggestions, just like similar products, as I said. So so and so product has been purchased by the similar user. So then they will suggest you. uh so th these items also uh, can be suitable for you like that they will give certain suggestions and uh, in e-commerce uh, customers based on the customer sentiments so they they try to use the machine learning models and recommender systems to uh, to guide them so like uh, what based on the market trends and user responses by using different filtering uh, collaborative filtering uh, like content based filtering whatever it may be if they use the recommender system they try to make certain decisions these are the top 7 e-commerce websites in india they use the data science as one of the uh, their core uh, for their business and healthcare also data science is one of the important without the data every industry they, they uh, earlier Uh, every people they try to take the computers. So even everyone needs the computer. The data is treated as very much important. There. Even the computer is used to solve those. Uh, uh, mean uh, means whatever the complex situations by using different models and techniques that we are going to solve. But uh, uh, this data is uh, is a, a crucial point for our analysis. data science in healthcare is uh, really without the proper data is healthcare industry actually they they won't do much actually it will be like in the past since the data is available everywhere and uh, they are able to yes uh, they are able to get the results properly that's why uh, the healthcare industry is doing good in all aspects Uh, even predictive analysis, including genomics, like treatment, treatments like personalization, like personalized medicine, also has uh, become the modern trend. Means person to person, means uh, for a certain disease. So the personalized medicine is also one of the the challenging uh, aspect because the genomes, human genomes, earlier make to make the human genome, it takes a lot of years to finish that human genome project. But for a genome, individual genome. is the one of the research with the with that they try to make the personalized medicines for different treatments medical image analysis drug discovery and uh, even in the gaming 
they try to use the data science as one of the important aspects uh in an energy industry if you uh, just to make the like uh, oil gas solar energy or hydro energy uh we try to use data science to provide optimal cost in investment as well as for minimizing the risk there are many aspects where the data science can be used and even for electricity providers also for different aspects that it be dealing with the uh, smart metering smart meter system from the generator to the distributors they use different aspects in the uh, in the name of data science in travel also they, they give a lot of uh, suggestions and even hotel management for for maintaining hotel costs are the suitable hotels for the different people they they have a lot of things including finance uh, in, in finance industries data science uh, usually use the customers data and with the help of the customer uh, customers data they try to make the certain business strategies and uh, yes uh, yeah in medical imaging yeah i am almost done so i think the time is also uh, over for me it's, it looks to me so there are uh, many machine learning for medical imaging and uh, yeah even diabetic retinopathy deep learning for diabetic retinopathy and medical imaging right uh, and even including covid 19 there are initially lot of challenges for detecting the covid 19 uh, covid 19 just like uh, uh, the kits are not working the test kits whatever they have given the rt pcr uh, tests sometimes giving correct sometimes not giving correct the accuracy is, is the one of the challenge issue in the beginning and likewise means uh, uh, there are a lot of research has been done and nowadays it's is uh, more or less fine so at the conclusion we came to the conclusion data science has uh, grown unbelievably and has significant effects on almost every field various industries like finance e-commerce travel healthcare by informatics they use the data science to meet their requirements and uh, ai is also is used for solving the data science problem especially uh, uh, yeah for the real world uh, problems yeah so these are various differences that i have gone through for uh, for making slides thank you if any queries then uh, thank you dr rao for your valuable insights on data science and ai and uh, we and, uh, they are used in various fields uh thank you dr satya babu for his description on the volume of data how much data actually people are generating every minute or every day he has explained how to target the customers and how to optimize the business processes with the help of big data concept on different uh, predictive models also he has talked about the personal quantification healthcare issues and public health related things again i am uh, very much thankful to mr mahapatra he has described about the robotics on our daily life how robots can act like a human how the robot will greet the people with the different kind of facial expression even as different kind of bots nowadays are available like chat bots to voice bot through which the people can get interact and uh, because all these things are developed by the ai and ml or the deep learning concepts so now i'd like to ask the participant if they are having any question they can raise or they can directly ask to our guest okay so one question come to professor jyotiranjan mohanty uh, sir to whom you want to ask this question anybody can respond anybody can respond okay, okay. any one of you so the question okay so the question is how much of ai and ds subjects or lessons have been integrated into courses in particularly medical science in india says that mbbs or ms course in india 
or sir you can directly see the question in the chat box yeah uh, yes can i answer this yes yes why not sir please ha uh, yeah uh, uh, professor jyoti ranjan mohanty yeah thanks for uh, the question uh, see actually this this is uh, data science and ai whatever we you are going to use they are actually as a tools nowadays everyone is using right and uh, apart from the tools if they want to learn insights like that uh, in, in especially related to the research probably uh, it's not required as a ai based tools like how they use maybe one or two courses they can they can uh, uh, use in their courses just like statistics and uh, the usual uh, courses of ai some tools matlab tools right and for for uh, certain medical related aspects just uh, in the medical image processing how the uh, analysis usually takes place for different researches and uh, not only that uh, even uh, statistics is very much essential for certain data analysis like um, based on the given data uh, maybe the history of the um, uh, the previous medical history of the so and so patients for uh, uh, predicting various class certification tools has to be used so just simply using the tools is sufficient not going in depth knowledge of the what exactly the uh, the uh, i mean uh, alternative tools are there and which is good based on the current trends uh, what what tool is preferable you use the tool from the market and uh, just that is sufficient for them and if they want to do certain research that means they they should be uh, from either mathematics background or computer science background or statistics background they should have purely yeah okay. yeah professor uh, satya babu is also can yeah yeah yeah, yeah sir uh, see like in india most of the medical courses what i have gone through uh, uh, especially some states few states which i have gone through the uses of uh, usage of this uh, decision science or maybe like this uh, data science and ai though it is very less but as a tool they are using it because majority of the tools what they use it they have been procured from foreign uh, like uh, companies and they are using it but in the courses it is very less but outside india in foreign universities and all i have seen like uh, in majority of the majority of my students also they have been recruited there uh, like to teach like phd scholars our from our institute also uh, like they have been recruited there in medical domain uh, currently like uh, one of my student who is doing this uh, in pollution uh, forecasting she is being uh, recruited like she is being advised to, uh, to apply for a position in a, as a professor in assistant professor in medicine department of medicine in portugal lisbon university so you can just understand that they are growing okay similarly in the days to come automatically you know that like slowly the courses get changed in the uh, as time evolve automatically the courses get changed and to a greater extent it is still less in india it is still less but if you take it publication point of view see majority of the uh, people they target uh, this question basically with respect to publication point of view but outside universities are doing very well with this so if we do anything with respect to the indian scenarios see majority of the companies also wanted to work with indian scenario data in medical sciences but people are not permitting we are very much uh, uh, secular means like what we say is that we have no no we don't want to give you you go to any office or anywhere you tell that like i wanted to get some so and so data for some my research they will not give you they are reserved right but see like the thing is like the, uh, pertaining to this particular question like uh, it is still less okay still less the usage of ai and data science is still less in curriculum but as a tool they use it well the next question is and one more point actually how yeah mm -hmm. uh, one more point i just want to add to it mm -hmm. uh, from the students point of view so the the one those who joined for the mbbs or ms courses 
uh, the the impression what they have over this data science and ai is also important because they won't give much importance to this but that's very important for uh, for various uh, aspects but how much importance they give is also important uh, it's uh, very crucial yes for for interruption uh, sir you are not visible at all actually please uh, turn on your camera Uh, sir like uh, i have some problem with my camera sorry okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. yes uh, tanaya das how much ai can be applied in legal sector to reduce the paperwork uh, even in legal sector ai and decision science or this uh, data science have already entered okay it has entered like one one uh, one person who came here for one placement one startup it was uh he was discussing with me uh, like he was inquiring like who works on data science and he came to me uh, and we were discussing about it. like he wanted like a uh, what are the based on his situations like he gives a situation see this is the situation this is the scenario of a case and it has to pull out from the huge volumes of the data or from the uh, records it has to pull out what are the similar cases so that he can study that similar cases so that's why he was asking me about will it be possible like this and uh, their company was working on that particular domain and uh, legal aspects everywhere sir almost ai data science entered everywhere it is like abc of uh, education nowadays okay so please uh, tanaya das i hope i have cleared you ah uh, yes i just add one more point to uh, yes. this Mm. Uh, one of our uh, means uh, from our uh, CSE department, IIT IIS in Dhanbad. One PhD was also awarded, uh, uh, especially for the legal sector, uh, applying the AI based techniques, applying the AI uh, based technique for the legal sector uh, domain. He has, uh, I think, he has published three or four good journals on on, on the particular aspects. But uh, well, what? Uh, he faced i observed is uh, the data is not sufficient to him for uh, uh, taking decisions he used to make lot of uh, synthetic data since the data is not available uh, to the researchers that was very tough for him to start his work actually to even to finish his work that was the uh, really panic to the one who works on it okay fine so another question uh, came from professor pratap kumar pati he is yes, asking sir. what is the difference between data science and decision science sir data science definitely it is a, a like a, uh, it is collaboration of different different fields okay the science of data it is simply the study of data only it is data science decision science as uh, i think only the management people can explain more about the decision science but it is like the process of like how decisions can be made like what are the process of making decision science so ultimately uh, my understanding is like this like in order to make decisions you need data so definitely underlying again if you go it is also data science only so that is my simple understanding maybe i may be wrong but decision science people from management they should be able to answer more clearly uh, than me but as far as uh, data science is concerned it is the Uh, science of data study of the data only what are the algorithms that are used how a particular model can be built like this okay okay so any more question on the participant side actually uh, yeah actually somewhere yes. i have seen uh, actually for the data scientist data is the tool sorry in addition scientist i am talking about decision science science related data is the tool to make decisions right yes and for the data science point of view data is the tool for improving the developing a new products based on the robust statistical methods yes mm -hmm. so it's all about the means the collection of quantitative techniques to yes. which the people are, or the one uh, population will take some level of the uh, decision this is and one of uh, one, one of the another meaning that is there or terminology that is analyst scientist versus analyst or data science versus data analysis so while both of, both of these analysts and data science they work with the data 
the main difference lies in what they do with the data see like a data analyst examine large sets of data to identify the trends some developing some charts and all and creating some visual presentations or to help the business uh, uh, process uh, or make the uh, strategic decisions and data scientist on the other hand what he, what he does is that he designs and constructs the new new processes so for data modeling some production activities or maybe like some he uses some prototypes some algorithms some procedures some models some like this some customized some analysis performing and all that is done by the data scientist so when we make a decision science decision science is most, mostly uh, the like decision science uh, decisions are more mostly made from analysis so our analyst uh, so that's why like uh, it, i just gave a word called like analyst analyst like there is a word like we generally study uh, like decision uh, uh, like we study data science or data analyst analysis right that's why yes any other questions please uh, one question from Because uh, you know that uh, uh, previously, whatever we have seen, that was a cyber war. Because in a digital segment, whatever the war has begun, that is called the cyber war. And uh, now, the same thing are happening. Okay, it's in a very drastic manner. That is called the like war. Means whatever the posting, whatever the videos, whatever the recordings, whatever we have shared in our social networking side. Okay, so that driving means you know that. goes viral very effectively okay and the likes shares or the lies also so here the concept is the deep learning because it is called the deep fakes so what is your take uh, i'm i just i want to ask dr rao and uh, dr satya babu that if deep fakes are uh, legalized or if it is legalized then what will happen in the near future because with the help of this deep fakes nowadays that each and every election there are in in situation and there are also very means you know that uh, uh, they are uh, utilizing this uh, deep fakes technology into their ele election campaign okay so as a result by using this deep fake, uh, fake video or the fake recording to commit another crime uh, it may be uh, extortion or fraud or the harassment kind of things see this is not legalized there is nothing legalized there is nothing which we call that one also like uh, not legalized that is the problem see it, people escape okay they yeah. escape with their own uh, methodologies uh, the thing is here what we need to understand is like uh, few things are there we have privacy rules it act 2008 2012 we are having the it 2016 i think uh, latest i think the it act is there so they take care like if anything uh, they they do not take care completely but they cover few aspects if you take the it act uh, what what it says is like um, okay uh, the process of like for example you tell the privacy of a person okay though it is not like into the it act to 2008 this uh, privacy concept is not what's not so much discussed if you take into consideration uh, uh, 2008 it act what they simply say is that only security as a, as a concept of security cyber security only they they do not mention about the concept of privacy so privacy because the the main thing is that the concept different differs from country to country see in india if you tell pri privacy suppose i ask you someone that can you please provide your mobile number they don't bother providing the mobile number what is the problem but if you say if you go to foreign and you ask that like you can i have your foreign uh, mobile number definitely they are not going to give you it is their private thing but here uh, in india what we say simply like uh, 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 there is a movie movie is going on or some you had you went to big bazaar or some uh, mall and then uh, automatically they give that side they write your address female uh, this uh, mobile number and all every detail and uh, gender everything you write it there and you could drop it in that box and possibly maybe like you may get a coupon okay that coupon may be like a, you may get a lottery and that lottery you may exchange it for some other shopping okay, what people do here we do it kya gaya hai chalo de dete we will give but this is not same okay this is not same with country to country this differs 
we should be uh, we should understand that concept also that's why it act this privacy laws were so much uh, in uh, in pr uh, prevalence in foreign uh, countries but in india that is not so much uh, like uh, uh, things were uh, not discussed much so people are free so it differs from country to country but as far as i know it has been not legalized like even you know that cryptocurrency cryptocurrency is like it is not legalized but trading and trading i think it in trading it is legalized purchasing and uh, selling it is legalized but uh, i think i am not exactly sure whether uh, uh, which one is legalized okay which type of cryptocurrency is legalized again i am not particularly sure i was just reading that one maybe like uh, something 6 months back and all but you say like uh, uh, taking into consideration this uh, uh, spreading rumors or something like this making it likes or dislikes and all all this this is up to person specific and if the government wants to make it like see if somebody tell uh, if somebody give a comment on me there is nothing that is going to do it but if somebody gives a comment on prime minister then prime minister may take it seriously if he takes so you cannot uh, uh, go against a prime minister or you cannot go against a president so there are rules our our rules our guidelines are such that uh, how you can even make a person culprit or how you can make him not a culprit okay how you can make him escape that all possibilities are there so you cannot say exactly like there are no rules but there are rules so if it happens to some celebrity but there are no rules if it happens to a common man i hope i have explained you in a dual role yes thank you sir <laughs> thank you yes sir anyone else please the pre the plenary ceremony has now come to an end i request the coordinator dr jhum swain to pro to propose the vote of thanks thank you uh, i would like to thank one small, small 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 thing please just i need to anybody working uh, doing some researching activity here uh, maybe like uh, doing performing some research and all in the domain of uh, text analytics and all if you are doing that one so please go Now, nowadays the latest trends and techniques are like working with the transformers okay so this is just my advice uh, you can use it maybe like for a sequential type of pro problem like uh, uh, professor rao has already uh, dis uh, discussed so many uh, techniques and all so for deep learning techniques especially for the text analytics and all so you can work with uh, because these are sequential based so you can work with rnn or maybe like uh, these are techniques i am telling maybe like if you are using it even for your masters or maybe like for your uh, phd thesis it will work it out maybe like rnn lstm gru or transformers and all you can use it uh, and coders and all you can use it these are the latest trends but uh, to the latest if you see transformers are the best okay it will give you uh, best results okay Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll be in touch with you. Yes. Okay. Mm. I'd like to thank all our eminent panelist members, Mr. Sakya Singh Mahapatra, Dr. Kora Satya Babu, and Dr. Anavarupu Chandrasekhar Rao to enlighten us with meaningful insights on AI and decision science. I would also like to take this opportunity to, to place on record my hearty thanks to President Sir. for the perfect logistic support and guidance vc sir and pro vc ma'am for the enormous cooperation in the organization of the symposium ultimately i would extend my thanks to all my faculty colleagues management and technical staff of this university my students research scholars and finally all the participants for participating and patiently hearing without which the symposium event would not have been a successful one thank you all once again thank you dr satya babu and dr rao thank you thank you sir and i hope we'll be in touch with you okay and uh, the further work will be i think will be uh, doing in collaboration manner okay okay fine thank you sir okay. thank you okay sir so thank you thank so you thank off. you professor ajit thank you mm -hmm.